Hi, welcome to Redox Reactions Part 6. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be looking at how to identify a redox reaction. Specifically, we're going to ask the question, when is a chemical reaction not a redox reaction? We're going to look at an equation and decide whether it's a redox reaction or not. Quick ways to recognize redox reactions. Consider another question and determine whether or not it's a redox reaction. And then finally, a little bit of practice at the end. When is a chemical reaction not a redox reaction? Remember, a chemical reaction that is classified as a redox reaction must show a change in oxidation number as elements lose and gain electrons. Let's look at this equation down here. Zinc plus copper 2 sulfate yields zinc sulfate and copper metal. Zinc, a free metal, has an oxidation number of zero. So let's put a zero over the top as a reactant and a positive two on the product side when combined with the sulfate. So I look over here and I know that the sulfate is minus two as a polyatomic, therefore the zinc must be a plus two. We can write an oxidation half reaction showing this. So here we have Zn zero yields Zn plus two and the two electrons being lost. In other words, the oxidation number of zinc has changed. It's gone from zero to plus two. At the same time, we have copper. Copper is a less reactive metal than zinc in this single replacement reaction, and the copper is going to begin with an oxidation number of positive two, because I know that the sulfate ion right here is minus two, therefore the copper must be plus two. I also see that when I look at the name of copper 2 sulfate and the Roman numeral right here says, hello, I'm plus two. As a product, copper becomes a free element and the oxidation number becomes zero. So we put a zero up here. Therefore, we can write the reduction half reaction of Cu plus two plus two electrons yields Cu zero. Again, we notice that as we go from reactants to products, the oxidation number of the copper has changed. When we see a change in oxidation numbers as we go from reactants to products, that tells us that we're dealing with a redox reaction. Now let's look at this chemical equation right here and assign oxidation numbers to all the elements. So I know that silver is going to be plus one, oxygen is going to be minus two, minus two times three gives me negative six, I'm going to bring down the plus one, therefore the nitrogen has to be plus five. I go to sodium and chlorine, sodium is plus one, chlorine is minus one. Now over to the product side, Ag is plus one, Cl is minus one. We wrap up with the sodium nitrate, sodium is plus one, oxygen is minus two, minus two times three gives me negative six, plus one, and therefore the nitrogen must be plus five. So plus five down here, whole thing works out to be electrically neutral. When we look at this, we have to ask ourselves the question, do any of the oxidation numbers change from the reactant side to the product side? So silver on the reactant side is plus one, plus one, nitrogen plus five, plus five, oxygen negative two, negative two, sodium plus one, plus one over on the product side, chlorine minus one, minus one over on the product side. We would not classify this as a redox reaction. There is no change in oxidation numbers for any of the elements as they go from reactants to products. Therefore, not all chemical reactions are redox reactions. Let's look at one more example. Sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid yields water and sodium chloride. Again, I'm going to start out by assigning oxidation numbers. Sodium is plus one, oxygen is minus two, hydrogen is plus one, electrically neutral. Hydrogen is plus one, chlorine is minus one, electrically neutral. Hydrogen is plus one, one times two gives me plus two, oxygen is minus two, minus two, that equals zero, Na is plus one, chlorine is minus one, and again, that is electrically neutral. I look over at the reactant side, sodium is plus one, sodium is plus one on the product side, oxygen is the same, hydrogens in all the places where it exists are the same, and the chlorine oxidation numbers are the same. 
So yet again, we have another chemical reaction that cannot be classified as a redox reaction because we're not seeing a change in oxidation numbers as we go from the reactant side to the product side. What is a quick way to recognize a redox reaction without assigning oxidation numbers to every single element because that can be a little time consuming. These are some absolute ways that you can use to really quickly recognize a redox reaction. Look for a diatomic element. Uh, diatomic nitrogen, diatomic hydrogen, oxygen, oh, I don't know, fluorine, any of these will basically indicate that you're dealing with a redox reaction. If it contains a free element, a metal or a non-metal by itself, sodium, magnesium, uh, sulfur, phosphorus, we classify all of these as free elements. All single replacement reactions are redox reactions. We're going to have a free element by itself combining with an ionic compound to form a new ionic compound and another free element easy way to recognize a redox reaction. Consider this equation. Which equation represents an oxidation reduction reaction, aka redox reaction? Now, we want to do this without assigning oxidation numbers to every single element here. So as we sort of scan through these, which one is the redox reaction? And if you say, oh, I think it's two, you'd be right because I look through this and the first thing I see is the diatomic chlorine. On the, on the product side, it's going to be zero. Over here, it's going to be minus one. I could go through just to double check and make sure that another element is changing and most likely it's going to be the manganese right here where oxygen's minus two, minus four. Manganese is going to be plus four. And then I come over to the product side. Chlorine is minus one times two minus two, therefore the manganese is plus two. So I see the chlorine basically undergoing oxidation and the manganese undergoing reduction. Therefore, choice number two would be the correct answer for this question. So what did we learn in this tutorial? We were able to recognize when a chemical reaction is not a redox reaction. We looked at an equation that basically demonstrated this. We talked about some quick ways to recognize redox reaction. We looked at another practice problem and then we ended up with a practice question. So that being said, yay, done with redox. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.